you know, when they get hurt, they get real disrespectful with the way that they talk to people. They get real foul. And they always say, you know, it was good when, when it was good and you made it bad. Okay, but how did you contribute to the bad and made it worse? As the aggressor can become the aggressed, the aggress can become the aggressor. And nine times out of ten, the aggressor, whom is afflicting harm, nine times out of ten, this individual has been aggressed by somebody else. You know, every bully has their bully. So with that being said, it leads me to the point that I want to make. Um, Say you have, or rather it leads me to the example that will lead us to the point. So say you have a family member and or friend whom is an addict. They suffer from an eating disorder. They suffer from alcoholism and heavy on the suffer, heavy on the suffer. A lot of times people love to talk about, you know, addicts, that little nympho, that little drug addict, that crackhead. I don't like doing that. I don't because every, every crackhead has their story. Every heroin addict has their story. You know, they weren't just always this heroin addict. They weren't always this sex deviant. Something happened to them. And that's the thing too. You know, a lot of times when you see people that are struggling with a sexual uh, deviancy, nine times out of 10, they could have been excessively harassed, assaulted, or abused. That has resulted in their vicarious navigation. That has resulted in them, you know, sleeping with various men. You know what I mean? Or various women, you know? You know what I'm saying? So continuing forth, you have someone that is an addict. As they are being aggressed because they are afflicted, they too can be an afflictor because of what they are afflicted with. So they are afflictors because their family is negatively impacted by their decisions, by their decisions by their behaviors and or decisions so if this addict has a child you know as this addict has parents siblings maybe even a significant other they are going to be affected by this person persons by this person's actions and or behaviors so just to clarify with the example of the addict and the bystander So the addict is the afflictor because they're afflicting themselves as they too are being afflicted by whomever is distributing their harm. So if they're dealing with drugs, you know, that heroin dealer, that crack dealer, they are afflicting the afflicted. But the afflicted, whom is the addict too, is being the afflictor because they're inducing this self-harm. You know, they're harming themselves by consuming this substance as they too are afflicting other people. The other people are the bystanders, the family, the friends. So if you're struggling with drugs, if you're st- struggling with sex, if you're struggling with um, food addiction, what have you, you know, you're not the only one that is being afflicted, yet you too can be the afflictor. Yet as the bystander can be afflicted by the afflicted whom is acting as the afflictor, they too can become an afflictor to the afflicted that has afflicted them and I know it sounds very um confusing but like just say it a couple of times and even write it down if you need to because it makes sense you know because sometimes the bystander may take that initial transgression and cultivate it to a place where it should have never been taken (laughs) because they're hurt by the hurt person that's hurting them so as the aggressed can become the aggressor, the aggressor can become the aggressed. I said that in the wrong uh, formatting. I meant to say as the aggressor can become the aggressed. The aggressed can become the aggressor. And this leads me to my point. What are you going to do when shit gets thick? What are you going to do when shit hits the fan? Because sometimes as we are being victimized by a person, we have this perception as if we leave unscathed. But no, it's how you respond. It's how you respond. And that's why I chose to use an addict, for example, because a lot of the shit that they do, because I have experience giving family members and friends, you know, a lot of the stuff that they do, you're like, you're too grown for this. You should know better by now. We've been through this, you know, 
more frequently than infrequently like get your shit together but also as someone that is observing their habit I too understand that if you're an alcoholic you know that's a daily struggle for you you will always be an alcoholic you will always be a crackhead you will always be a heroin addict in that because you have struggled with this vice it will always be a tempting temptation for you you know every day it's just the opportunity not to relapse yet there is a possibility that you could so I kind of forgot what I was saying because I been running my mouth a little bit too much but I'm just saying like you know sometimes when we are hurt by people that are hurt we try to do the same thing to them we may degrade them we may you know uh physically project our frustrations on that person by you know hitting them or what have you but that's not how you respond that's not how you respond like there's no point of attempting to make someone feel how you feel because there's no resolve that comes from that you can allow somebody to understand where you're coming from with your feelings but to make somebody feel how you feel and you feel terrible and you feel like shit nine times out of ten if someone else made you feel like shit they probably feel really shitty themselves may they be consciously unconsciously or subconsciously aware of this they they know they ain't shit for making you feel like shit why do you have to go out your way to make them feel like less than the shit that they already feel you know what I mean I've never been that type of person or at least I attempt not to be that type of person so hopefully you kind of understand where I'm coming from with this but I really just wanted to speak to how you know if someone has hurt you there really is no just reason for you to go out your way to hurt that person or to make them feel as you feel there's a difference between making somebody feel how you feel or allowing someone to truly understand how you feel almost on the verge of it almost on the verge of them feeling as you felt so yeah you know like I'm not gonna I'm never gonna see a prostitute kind of like um that Tyler Perry movie I don't remember it too uh vividly but vaguely you know I remember the woman who used to be a prostitute trying Viola Davis you know she was reaching out to um little old Rudy on the streets and she was talking to her a bit aggressively and when you talk to somebody aggressively like that only in the movies do you see people respond in a favorable manner but in real life that's disheartening no you come to them in a way that's realistic it's not it doesn't have to be harsh it can be crude you know and crude is honest but it doesn't have to be you little nasty street walker hoe you like you need penis you know like you don't have to talk to people like that if they're frustrating you by their doings. No, just be like, hey, look, mommy, you better than that or something like that. I don't know. I feel like this example isn't the best encapsulation of what I said previously. But it's like, say, for example, you know, a mom, like on my 600 pound weight loss, they're like, oh, you just you're a fat bitch. You just lay on that couch every day. It's a damn shame that you only get off the couch for a fucking twanky. You you move the remote control as much as you move more than you move your legs. You know, that's disheartening. So as this child may be more or less 600 pounds, the parent is then catering to this child. And because this parent is catering to the child, it's almost like they're enabling this behavior. Yet too, they are frustrated because now they have to take care of their child who may be 30 to 20 years old. And at the ripe old age of 50 and 60, the parent can't have the friendships that they want to have. The parent can't have the relationships romantically that they want to have. So they become frustrated and they feel grief towards their child and rather than interpreting that grief in a way that is best understood most practical they speak from a place of emotion and emotion isn't always practical emotion isn't always logical and it isn't always going to give you the resolve that you need so at times it's like okay like I said previously you know the mom is cursing out this kid you think the kid is going to stop doing what they're doing? And I'm not saying always speaking from a place of love is going to change your circumstance, but you just got to be practical and logical. Don't go from a place of emotion and be like, I'm hurt and you're hurting me and now I'm going to hurt you. What is that going to do? What is that going to do? It's going to keep, it's going to sustain the cycle of hurt. It's not going to heal anything. It's not. Calling your kid a fat ass is not going to get them off the couch. They're still going to be fat after you said all that you wanted to say. You know, like some people get so caught up in saying what they want to say. Like, I have to say what I want to say because you got to do what you want to do. And in theory, 
this may be good logic to have with reason, but it's not resolutionary. I'm a person of resolve. (laughs) And maybe that has a lot to do with my, you know, Libra Zodiac. But I'm just like, no, like, that's just, I don't know. It's just, I speak of this because I know people in my life that are like this. You know, when they get hurt, they get real disrespectful with the way that they talk to people. They get real foul. And they always say, you know, it was good when, when it was good and you made it bad. Okay, but how did you contribute to the bad and made it worse? Ask yourself that. It's not about when things are good or how things have improved. It's about whenever, when shit gets thick, what are you going to do? How are you going to respond? Because all you can be is responsible for yourself. What are you going to do? Because sometimes the aggressor, if not oftentimes, the aggressor has been aggressed. You know, the aggressor has been aggressed. Proceeding with the my hundred, my hundred, my 600 pound weight loss um, example, say this person that was once 600 pounds now reduces their weight to 300 pounds. Yet after reaching their goal of 300, they get then gain 100 pounds and now they're 400 pounds. Are you how are you going to respond to that person? How do you respond to that person? Because it was worse then it became better. But now there's a relapse. How are you going to respond? How? Because as much as it's frustrating for you, I could just imagine how frustrating it is for that person. There's ways of expressing yourself and interpreting your emotions with logic and reasoning. And that's what a lot of people got to 